Hello fellow teachers, so welcome back to your channel. I'm Zinnaba Highland, this is English for Africa channel. And today I come up with one of the biggest uh, lesson in the English language. It's going to be pronunciation skill. So in this video, I'm going to share with you the secrets of speaking like a native speaker. And uh, if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Without any further ado, let's get into our session. So we're going to start with the uh, introduction. Learning and mastering uh, two things is important to develop your English language pronunciation. And uh, again, pronunciation problems of non-native speakers ties are related to these two things. Uh, the first one that we are going to see is individual sounds of English. So we need to see the vowels and the consonants. Uh, you need to know each of them. And secondly, the correct rhythm of English language. English language has got its own rhythm of uh, language as any uh, language in the world. So these two things are important for you to learn in the master. So let's see them one by one. First, so we're going to start with the cause of pronunciation problem for non-native speakers. It's going to be accent. Um, let's define it. Accent is the carryover of the sounds and rhythm of your first language to your second language. Thus, uh, to be fluent in English language, you need to use the correct rhythm of the language and its sound. Uh, so you need to learn in the master theme. Uh, let me share with you one of uh, my funniest encounter while I'm teaching in the university here in Ethiopia. So one of my colleagues is uh, Indian and uh, on a certain program, he came up with his wife and they want to introduce to us. Uh, so he started by saying this. I'm dirty too, and my wife is dirty. So we a little bit uh, have a fun, and uh, we laughed out loud. Uh, but uh, the problem is that in the Indian language there is not the sound. Therefore, there is a carryover of his own language to the English language. That's why if you want to say I'm dirty too, and my wife is dirty, but he says I'm dirty too, and my wife is dirty, which is a little bit fun, right, guys? So this is uh, one of the important things you need to notice uh, if you want to improve your pronunciation problems. Uh, the accent of our first language is... Uh, we, we need to get rid of that. How? Let's see them one by one. So we start with defining pronunciation. What is pronunciation? It's the way in which a language or a particular word or a sound is pronounced in a given language. So it encompasses uh, accent, dialect and idolect. Uh, let's define these three of them so that you will understand the uh, pronunciation. We start with accent. Uh, accent is a way of pronouncing the words of a language that shows which country, area or social class a person comes from. You can easily say it is a manner of pronunciation or a particular way of pronouncing a language associated with a country or areas or social class even. For instance, we do have uh, the British accent, the Indian accent, the Scottish accent, the African accent. accent. Uh, to be able to understand this, uh, I hope uh, you had watched the Mind Your Language movie, one of the classical movie for me. And uh, you do have uh, a fun on this movie, it's a serious movie. So watch and understand how accents have got uh, uh, defined in there. Next, you're going to see dialect and idolect. Firstly, let's start with dialect. Dialect is a form of a language that is spoken in one area with a grammar, words, and pronunciation that may be different from other forms of the same language. The English language has got so many dialects even in the England or British. And uh, when it comes to Ethiopia, for instance, in our country, we have Amharic language, one of widely spoken language. We have over 10 dialects of the same language. What about idolect? Idolect is the way that a particular person uses language, uh, the speech habits peculiar to a particular person, you can say, for instance, the way Barack Obama uh, and Donald Trump speak uh, in English is different, right? You can see these two guys, they are from America, they speak the same language English, but the way they speak is different, and that's what we call idolect. 
Now we're going to come to uh, the various English accents from around the world. Uh, so we have various widely spoken accents in the world. The Australian accent, the American accent, the Scottish accent, the British accent, blah, blah, blah. So, so many people ask us one question and that is, uh, which accent is considered the standard English pronunciation? To answer this question is a little bit difficult, but uh, many scholars suggest that the standard English pronunciation is what is used by most international mass media, whether the British or the American accent. Uh, these mass medias feature the standard English pronunciation. However, um, there are also other scholars, language scholars, which uh, say that the British accent is said to be the standard English pronunciation. Even some disagree. Uh, the reason is that um, the Britain or uh, England have colonized uh, even Australia, America, so the effect of their accent is there in these uh, countries. So that's why some uh, uh, language scholars uh, say that the British accent is the standard word. But what I can say here is that uh, what mass media, international mass media, used in their uh, media is what we can say the standard English pronunciation. For instance, CNN, BBC Al Jazeera, CNN, BBC Reuters, extra you can say. Next, I'm going to share with you six steps that will help you to learn English pronunciation. If you um, implement these six strategies, you can easily improve your pronunciation. So let's see them one by one. First, decide and commit. You cannot change your pronunciation skill overnight. It needs patience. So study consistently and patience is your way out. Second, learn the rules. For instance, for many non-native speakers, uh, these two words, as an example, are tricky and difficult to see their pronunciation difference. So uh, we pronounce them or they pronounce them with the same um, pronunciation. So thank and thank. So on the dictionary, you will get uh, the phonetic transcription and you can easily figure out the difference. So they have a different uh, pronunciation. So in order to say thank you, if you say thank, uh, it's going to be a different meaning. So thank and thank. Third, you need always to listen. Correct your own errors by listening. You can listen to movies, uh, music, even documentaries. So such kind of words, for instance, may be tricky and uh, you can improve them uh, once uh, you listen carefully about how they can pronounce it. Many people say uh, funeral, but the correct way of uh, pronouncing is funeral, funeral. And again, the two words here, uh, many people uh, get confused with them, thorough and sorrow, thorough and sorrow. So such kind of uh, errors or mispronunciation can be corrected by listening and the exposure you have got to the language. Fourth, learn the correct mouse movements. To have uh, the correct pronunciation, you need to work on your lip, teeth and tongue. This is how you can create the correct pronunciation. You can even watch others while they utter words. For instance, uh, here we have long and short vowels with the same similar pronunciation seems but a little bit different. So we have hit and hit. Hit, hit. Long and short vowels are used in these words. The first one uses short vowel, the second one is long vowel. So with the correct lip and teeth, uh, I mean lip, teeth and tongue, uh, you can create this pronunciation. So you need to learn the correct mouse movement. Just fifth, you need to practice. Daily practice for 30 minutes and uh, you'll see the difference. For instance, there are some uh, silent letters in some words of English like island and knife. So Many native speakers uh, pronounce the same thing, I mean, the silent words, I mean, uh, letters or sounds. So, for instance, they may say Iceland or knife, which is a little bit weird and uh, mispronunciation. So, you need to practice on this one. And lastly, use in a daily conversation. Once you have learned a new pronunciation, which is the correct pronunciation of a given word, 
you can use it in your daily conversation that that's how you can master it okay now we're going to come to the second part uh, we're going to start with sounds of english uh, it's a little bit um and tricky here we do have 44 sounds in the English language among these 17 of them are vowels while 27 of them are consonants so you need your dictionary in your hand to study them what you have learned uh, in the school is there are 26 letters and uh, the vowels as well as the consonants but the English language has got 44 sounds and uh, for this purpose uh, we have only 26 letters therefore there are something that we call phonics transcription which is provided uh, with symbols in the dictionary so you can easily learn them uh, we can have 12 diagraphs in the English language uh, diagraphs means uh, two consecutive letters forming a single sound when spoken together for instance uh, uh, P and H, uh, they create F sound, like in physics. C and H, they create K sound, like uh, in chemical. Again, we do have vowels working together to create one sound, like in pipe and in cloud. So you need to try to sort out different sounds and work on them. Then try to learn the basics of these sounds. Uh, as I've said earlier, the correct mouth shape and the movement creates a meaning difference. For instance, uh, if you want to say uh, hungry, you don't want to utter hungry. So H and E uh, or E uh, have got the same uh, mean different uh, differences in them. Next, we're going to come to the rhythm of English. So, learning the correct rhythm of English involves the following points. Language like in music gets on rhythm. Every language gets on rhythm. Therefore, when you talk about rhythm, we need to know the following things. We're going to see them one by one. Word stress, sentence stress, intonation, linking, pausing, or rate of speech. We start with the stress. So, what do we mean of stress? Stress is an extra force used when pronouncing a particular word or a syllable. For instance, desert, we have, uh, pro I mean, stress, the first syllable, uh, the meaning is dry climate. It means uh, when you pronounce on the first syllable, it's a noun. When we pronounce on the second syllable, it becomes a verb. So, desert. The second example is or word is desert, which means to live or abandon. See the difference? Desert. Desert. This is what I mean of stress. Even single words have got different stress and different meaning. So in English, we have to use the correct stress to deliver the desired meaning. And again, uh, there is stress in sentences. The speakers um, do this. Uh, they stress content words and distress function words. For instance, uh, if you got it like I got it, you know what I mean. This is a long word, I mean sentence, but uh, we can stress and make like this. If you got like a got it, you know what I mean. If you got like a got it, you know what I mean. You see, I just uh, stressed only the content word with underlined ones. So have this in mind. And next you're going to see intonation. Intonation is the rise and the fall of voice in speaking, especially as this affects the meaning of what is being said. For instance, in English, interrogative and exclamatory sentences have a rising intonation. Uh, for instance, can I help you? This interrogative sentence. The next two are exclamatory sentences. The supermarket is on fire, fire, fire. What a moody night it is. This is what we mean of uh, intonation, so they create meaning difference. What about pitch? Pitch is how high or low a sound is, especially when we speak, we vary our speed to achieve the desired intonation. Without pitch, we can't achieve the, the desired intonation, therefore, it is important they work together. So, uh, for example, in English, a rising intonation has got a high pitch or volume, as I've said earlier. Can't help you! The supermarket is on fire! 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 So, pitch conveys a great deal of meaning beyond the word themselves, so you need to master them. 
Let's see some examples uh, to see the differences in intonation and pitch. So consider the change of message with the rise and fall of our intonation in the following sentence. I'm going to say them. I enjoyed the game. Did you enjoy the game? That's surprising. They scored on the last second? Just a moment. Did you mean we have to evacuate? I think you see how uh, the intonation and pitch works here. Next, we're going to see um, linking, pausing, and rate of speech. So, net speakers purposely do the following in their spoken English. First, they pause after making important points, so to invite the interlocutor to the communication by any gaining their ample attention. Next, they vary the quality of their voice or tone. For instance, sometimes they use conversational tone, sometimes surprise tone, etc. Again, they speak slowly and clearly. They don't speak too fast. Uh, what we are confused with this is they link sounds and words deliberately. They don't speak uh, slowly, uh, I mean uh, fast. They speak slowly and clearly. So we are confused that they speak too fast while they link sounds and words deliberately. Let's see what we mean of this. Linking. Linking happens in spoken English when we skip uttering every single word and mix sounds or words together to shorten them. And we can do this uh, either using contractions or lesions. Moreover, again, linking happens when we use variety of conjunctions to connect our clauses or sentences in, in conversation or even writing. Uh, so we call this one connected speech. You can have your own reading over this, uh, but let me go to the two mechanisms that you can create linking. First, you're going to see contractions. Contraction is the process of making a word or expression short. For example, in order to say he is or he as you can, you can say his or as I would becomes out. Do you becomes dear? Let's see them in a sentence. I do not want a tea becomes, I don't want a tea. He will win the lottery becomes, he'll win the lottery. Let us go and have a fun in the downtown becomes, let's go and have a fun in the downtown. This is how contraction works. Next, you're going to see lesion. Uh, lesion is a little bit uh, challenging. It is the act of leaving out the sound of part of a word when you are pronouncing it. So you use, on, uh, use only in spoken English. Legions are only used in spoken English. You can't use them in written English because they are not formal. For example, wana, gana, sorta, lofta, dija. Uh, let's see them in a sentence. Do you want a cup of tea? Becomes. Do you want a cup of tea? Do you want a cup of tea? You see how uh, I have. Uh, uh, contract, I mean, uh, a little most of uh, the, the, the sounds and the, the syllables in the words. Do you want a cup of tea? Do you want a cup of tea? I do not want a tea. It comes. I don't want a tea. I don't want a tea. I don't want a tea is a contraction. I don't want a tea is an illusion. You see the difference? Great. Let's move on. Now I'm going to give examples of mostly used uh, legends here. Try to figure out uh, their full form. Wanna go to go to have to coulda shoulda woulda must a lot of sort of. So just pause the video and try to guess. Uh, I'm going to directly go to the answers. You can pause the video and uh, figure out. So we have wanna want to. Gonna, going to, gotta, go to, have to, have to, coulda, could have, shoulda, should have, woulda, would have, must, must have, lots, a lot of, sort, of, sort of, dija, did you, did you, dija, see, dija, did you, wuja, would you, was that, what is that, was that. Now we're going to come to the end of our lesson, but we, before we wrap up our today's lesson, I'm going to give you practice session. Let's uh, use these uh, legends in sentences uh, as usual. I'm going to give you a minute to pause the video and try to figure out what these sentences refer.
we use a legend here in these sentences so pause the video and uh, try to figure out again I'm going to jump into the answers so this is how it's done how are you feeling today is how are you feeling today it's a longer one you see so how are you feeling today is a little bit uh, natural in spoken English this kind of one are there a lot of students becomes there a lot of students there a lot of students what did you mean of that becomes what do you mean of that what do you mean of that I'm supposed taking the exam becomes in spoken English I'm supposed to take in the exam I'm going to go to home for the holiday becomes I'm gonna go to home for the holiday I'm gonna go to home for the holiday do you want to take the picture becomes do you want to take the picture do you want to take the picture I'm sort of tired today becomes I'm a sort of tired today I'm a sort of tired today have there been any class becomes have there been any class have there been any class you see we bring the three words together have there been any class so this is how you can use legends which is one of the rhythm of English and uh, this will take us to the end of our today's session as uh, the last word my last word I can say we are dedicated to speak natural with fluency and better pronunciation so enjoy your pronunciation study I hope uh, this video is uh, helpful to you thank you for staying with me if you are new here don't forget to subscribe and like the video and I'm going to see you on next week see you soon bye bye